Welcome to PaxX TV, your destination for passenger experience news. Let's look at the headlines affecting passengers and aviation enthusiasts today. Passengers flying across the North Atlantic should expect to see their in-flight internet experience improve in the coming months now that satellite operator Intelsat has successfully launched its high-throughput satellite to cover the North Atlantic region. The satellite will be used to support connectivity on a number of airlines, including Lufthansa, United Airlines, Aer Lingus, and Select American Airlines flights, and could be used to bolster service on Delta Airlines as well. Meanwhile, another satellite operator, Inmarsat, is gearing up for its own high-throughput offering to be made available to airlines around the globe once the requisite antenna hardware certifications are cleared. Now, that's all good news for passengers who increasingly expect an at-home internet experience in the sky. Next up, we'll take a look at what our roving reporters have uncovered on the road. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, GoGo. Elevate the in-flight experience with GoGo 2KU. 2KU delivers new opportunities for your customers. Industry-leading speeds allow more in-flight, including video streaming and live TV, while enabling apps that enhance customer service. And 2KU's unique antenna provides superior global performance, keeping passengers connected wherever they travel. Find out more about the best performing IFC solution in flight today. GoGo, -Go, the catalyst for advancing aviation. Our correspondent John Walton witnessed a remarkable event at Perth Airport in Australia recently. And his video of the event went viral on social media. John, what did you see? Well, Mary, I was touring Perth Airport and spotted a Qantas 747 at the International Terminal. And I knew they didn't fly 747s from Perth anymore. Then I spotted the extra engine and it twigged. Another 747 had been stuck in Johannesburg with engine problems and Qantas was flying an engine out to it on this aircraft. The airport staffers I was with offered to drive us out to watch it take off and even the long-time op staffer said it wasn't the kind of thing you see every day. How rare to have witnessed something like that, John. You must have felt very lucky. Yes, that's right. Of course, the 747 is so iconic that seeing it in Perth after a while got everyone looking. Back at headquarters, Qantas put together a blog post and a great video about it was picked up by a lot of fans and the general media. There's a lot of good feeling for Qantas in Australia. The airline calls itself the spirit of Australia, after all, and people love reading about cool aviation details like this. Thanks, John. Now we head over to London Heathrow for a walk down aviation memory lane. British Airways is one of the world's oldest and most iconic airlines. Fortunately, BA has extensively documented its own heritage, with an impressive collection carefully preserved and on display at its waterside headquarters near London Heathrow. The, the facility here, the museum itself, is set up uh, as a timeline, as many museums are of course, um, which really lists uh, our history from uh, August 25th August 1919 when we operated what's considered the world's first commercial scheduled service. We have over 400 uniforms in the collection, many of which are here to see. We have a static collection of some of the important uh, cabin crew uniforms since the uh, end of the Second World War, for example. We have over probably 250 aircraft models in the collection, many of which are on display from some of the very first biplanes that we used to operate right through to Concorde and the very latest 787s and 747s. We've got at least two and a half thousand boxes, archive boxes downstairs, which uh, are available for researchers, which we're slowly working our way through, which is the company's data, if you like, its history from 19, well, actually before that, about the early, very early 1920s, right up to the present day. In addition to classic table settings, ashtrays, seats, photographs and hours upon hours of video, the collection boasts what Jarvis believes to be the UK's largest assortment of vintage airline advertising posters. There's also a display detailing how the Olympic flame was brought from Athens to London on British Airways using turn-of-the-century safety lamps, and naturally the famed Concorde is cornerstone of the collection. Well, Concorde, of course, was the British Airways flagship for many years. Um, and now stands as one of our proudest heritage pieces within the collection. And we have quite a number of models of Concorde, uh, even from when it was first being designed, which is in our, one of our predecessor companies, BAC's Colours, uh, because of course it was BAC that assigned the order uh, 
for the number of Concords that eventually came into the British Airways fleet. Volunteers working at the BA Heritage Collection welcome about 500 visitors every week. As a nationalised airline of the United Kingdom, we feel a duty to ensure that the records we have here are available for members of the public, not just our own staff or customers, to come and see. So uh, anyone can come and visit us uh, when they make an appointment. It's very easy to get here. Uh, just let us know. Speaking of memories, we want to remind viewers that February is Black History Month and there are many remarkable men and women of color who have contributed to aviation through the years. Bessie Coleman triumphed over great odds to become the first licensed black pilot. You can find a profile of Bessie and other modern day heroes on Runway Girl Network. That's all for this episode of PaxX TV. Join us again next time for all the latest news on the passenger experience. It's a great day, I'm feeling good. Oh, the possibility.